those of you that follow me on Twitter or Instagram already know what I have in front of me. And if you don't follow me there, you definitely should. But what I have in front of me right now is, this is from Geekworm, it is the HDMI to CSI2 bridge. In a nutshell, what this allows you to do is take an HDMI source and present that to the Raspberry Pi as though it's a camera. Now when I first started to use this, the idea that came to mind is to use one of my digital cameras as an HDMI source because I have lots of lenses that are available and this suddenly makes all of those lenses available for use in a Raspberry Pi. But you're not limited to using camera sources. Remember, since, it's an H since it is an HDMI source, almost anything that produces an HDMI output is a candidate for what you could do video capture from. Now that said, uh, this device is very picky about what frame rates and resolutions that it supports. Uh, when I was first using it, for a moment I thought it was broken because my camera settings were set to something that was not compatible with this. After looking at the documentation a little bit more, and finding uh, which frame rates and which resolutions were supported, I made a few adjustments to my camera. Now, as far as installation goes, this connects to your uh, Raspberry Pi the same way that you would connect to any other camera. Uh, if you're using a Raspberry Pi Zero, then you will want to use the smaller cable. The unit, when you purchase it, it does come with both cables that you might need. The installation process is pretty simple. You just take the ribbon cable from the uh, camera, slide it into the camera port, and make sure I have it in here straight. Okay, so it's in place. And once it's in there and in place, then you just press down on the locking mechanism to make sure that the cable is in there securely. That's all that's required for installation. Now to use it, of course, you need to connect it to an HDMI source now just so that I can show you what's going on, instead of connecting my Raspberry Pi to a monitor, I'm actually going to connect it to another capture device on my computer so that I can record everything that the Raspberry Pi would be outputting. Uh, so let me get my Nintendo Switch connected to that because I'm going to use that as my sample source. Now everything is connected. I'm going from the Nintendo Switch to the HDMI capture device, and then from the HDMI capture device to the Raspberry Pi. Now before I do anything on my computer, I need to make sure that the Nintendo Switch is turned on, because if uh, your HDMI source isn't turned on when you try and use any of the Raspberry Pi capture utilities, uh, there is an error that gets returned. And the error does not give you any type of hint as to what's going on. Uh, it just indicates to you that your camera might be broken or a driver might not be installed where the only thing that you might need to do is just wake up a device that might have gone to sleep. Here I am on the Pi. I'm in my pictures folder. This is where I'm going to be storing anything I capture from the device. So the very first test that I want to do is to try and capture a still image from the device. So we can just use the uh, rasp raspy still command in order to capture an image and it's going to write to uh, a file named still.jpg here. So I run it, and here's the preview. And so we see the live preview for a moment, and then it takes a screenshot, or takes a capture, and it is now saved in that folder. Uh, now if I wanna see it, let's go ahead and open up the pictures folder, just to make sure that uh, it actually saved. So if I go into pictures, okay, so this is my only image within here. And there's the uh, frame capture that it performed. Now I'm going to capture a video from the device using the uh, raspy vid command. Here you can see it's going to save to a file called nintendo.h264. It's going to run for 30 seconds. And let's get it going. Okay, so now it's running. Right now the video... Oops, I just fell off. Uh, right now the video capture rate it seems to be okay so i don't really have complaints there um, but right now you're seeing how everything looks as it's being rendered by the pi since i'm capturing the raw video i can also append that to the end of this video just so you can see what happens if it's not being rendered by the pi so i'm going to throw this into the end video without um just my video editor without uh really doing much changes on it uh the one problem that I would run into if I were to try and take the file as it is, .h264, I'm not going to be able to read that on my computer. So 
So it needs to be wrapped inside of uh, another container, and we can use MP4 box in order to do that. Uh, when I run the command, it's going to read that file, put it inside of an MP4 envelope, and now it's in something that we can read. That command is not available on Raspberry Pi by default, but you can easily install it using this command, sudo apt git install gpack. And that'll put everything in place for you so that you can do conversion from the .h264 files uh, to .mp4 files. Now here I've just copied the h.264 file to the end of uh, this video. Now I thought I'd just be adding it without making any modifications to it, but I did have to make one modification. For some reason it was playing back at the wrong frame rate. It was marked as running at 25 frames per second when it actually should have been 30 frames per second. And it was very apparent because things look sluggish. So that's only a slight adjustment in the uh, setting for the video, but outside of that, I haven't done any other editing on here. Uh, so it's coming across and is pretty much looking uh, how I'd expect it to. Overall, my experience with this has been good. Uh, it could be better, but it hasn't been bad. Uh, one way that I think the experience could be improved is if this worked with more frame rates and more resolutions. I would definitely love if it could work with 1080p at 30 frames per second instead of just 25. I don't even need 60. I would just would love 30. But that said, I recognize the limitations of it and I have no problems working within those. Now I did also try to see how this would work on a Jetson Nano. And to my surprise, it actually does not work on a Jetson Nano. While they're both using the CSI2 interface, the Jetson Nano does not have the drivers that it takes for working with this. The Jetson Nano will work with the actual Raspberry Pi camera, but just not with this device. So that was a little disappointing. That would be one other area of improvement that I would love to see. But overall, since uh, this works for me, I would say that if you need an HDMI capture device, this is definitely one to consider. Just make sure that whatever you intend to use it for is outputting in a frame rate and resolution that this device will work with. If you liked this content and would like to see more, be sure to check out my blog at j2i.net. Also, follow me on my other social media channels displayed here. Until next time.